fashion designer Kate Spade, who founded a $2.4 billion clothing and accessories empire, has been found dead in her Manhattan home in a suspected suicide. Spade, 55, was discovered in her Park Avenue home on Tuesday morning by her housekeeper. She had reportedly left a note telling her teenage daughter it was not her fault. Spade leaves behind a design legacy that included 140 retail shops and outlet stores and more than 175 stores internationally, in addition to the iconic handbags that launched her career. Named Glamour Magazine's Woman of the Year in 2002, she told the magazine at the time, I hope that people remember me not just as a good businesswoman but as a great friend, and a heck of a lot of fun. The designer was married to Andy, a marketing executive, with whom she co-founded her eponymous handbag and accessories brand. The couple have a 13-year-old daughter, Frances Beatrix. David Spade, her brother-in-law and comedian, said she could make me laugh so hard. Fuzzy picture but I love it. Kate and I during Christmas family photos? We had so much fun that day. She was so sharp and quick on her feet. She could make me laugh so hard. I still can't believe it. It's a rough world out there people, try to hang on. Dash, via Instagram. Ivanka Trump, who founded her own fashion line, tweeted her condolences, saying Spade's death is a painful reminder that we never truly know another's pain or the burden they carry. Diane von Furstenberg, chair of the Council of Fashion Designers of America, and the organization's president, Steve Cole, released a joint statement saying, the CFDA is devastated to hear the news of our friend, colleague and CFDA member Kate Spade's tragic passing. Chelsea Clinton also tweeted her condolences, saying she remembered her grandmother giving her her first Kate Spade bag. Born in Kansas City, Missouri, Spade graduated in 1985 with a journalism degree from Arizona State University and then backpacked around Europe. The next year, she moved to New York and worked as temp before finding a job at Condé Nast, in the accessories department at Mademoiselle magazine. I started as an assistant, she said, in January, in an interview with NPR. So I was tying, you know, models' shoes on a photo shoot because they couldn't bend over in their clothes, that were getting hair stylist snickers. I'm telling you, whatever, I ironed and carried bags. And it was a lot of work, I'll say that. She rose to become the accessories director of the magazine. But she said she struggled to find handbags she liked and in 1993 quit journalism to start her own brand, taking inspiration from her mother's collection of bags, stored in her closet in Kansas City. She had clutches, oranges, pinks, chocolates, huge pearl buttons, she told Time. With no design experience, she said she began by buying big sheets of white paper, she explained, I would cut out and tape, honestly, the shape that I wanted. And then I'd look at it and I'd make it shorter, smaller, cut it. And I remember being really embarrassed about that that, that I wasn't, you know, a student from Parsons or RISD or FIT, that I really didn't know what I was doing. And I honestly started with paper. Then we'd make a sample out of any kind of fabric, muslin. And then I kind of got the shape down, and I had to find a manufacturer. She told how, at her first trade show, she returned in floods of tears because she had not even recouped the costs of the stand. I said, I think we should shut it down, she recalled. I'm very conservative. And I said, I have no interest in losing money. 
I said, and we've, you know, we've already spent $4,000. That's it for me. I'm not a gambler. So that's where Andy was like, no, keep going. In 1997, she launched a men's line designed by her husband, called Jack Spade, and by 1998, annual revenues had reached $27 million. Two years later the Spades sold 56% of their business to Neiman Marcus for $34 million, selling the remaining share to the company in 2005 for a reported $59 million. Assuming the Spades split their share with partners, they would have walked away with $46.5 million before taxes. In May 2017, Coach bought the brand for $2.4 billion, but the Spades would not have received a penny of that, having sold their stake over a decade previously. She went on to found a second label, Francis Valentine, specializing in Italian accessories. I am sure there are places that are well-oiled machines, but this is a relatively new business and I'm looking at it like that, she said in an interview in 2016 to promote the new brand. It's really similar to how I started at Kate Spade, it was very scrappy. We started very small and we tried not to get ahead of ourselves, I'm from the Midwest, so I'm not much of a risk taker. We are really listening to the buyers and the costumers. What are they buying? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? I'm not big into social media, but Andy is, so we put a lot up on Instagram for the brand. She spoke about the joys of running her own business, and making sure every evening to eat dinner with her husband and daughter. My life is a little kooky but a lot of fun, she said. In January she said, I feel a little more confident. I think Andy feels the same because we've done it before. But on the same hand, you think that people are expecting a great deal. So there's still a lot of pressure, trust me. And we're self-financing again, so I'm not crazy about, as I mentioned earlier, losing any money. So, you know, this thing better work. The New York Police Department confirmed the designer's death under her birth name, Catherine Noel Brosnahan, 